Good afternoon. I now call to order the April meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices continue to be closed to the public in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate at the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's policy review committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding the motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy of the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Clark or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Clark, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, good afternoon. Ms. Causey? Ms. Causey? Good afternoon, present. Mr. Offerman? Present. Mr. Mahumza? Present. Ms. Scott? Present. Yeah, for quorum. Thank you, Ms. Clark. And Ms. Clark, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Um, Ms. Burnup? Present. Mr. Duke? Present. Ms. Ferguson? Present. Ms. Hahn? Present. Ms. Levenstein? Present. Ms. Lowry? Present. Dr. Nieves? Present. Mr. Patillo? Present. Dr. Scriven? Present. Ms. Spencer? Present. Ms. Stansberry? Present. Dr. Wistead? Present. Dr. Zarchin? Present. Thank you. Thank and you. Clark, I believe uh, Ms. Langeman is uh, present as well today. Yes, I'm present. I was waiting till the end. I'm not presenting, but I am present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was going to ask if there were any other staff that were on. Okay, and I just wanted to see, are there any other board members that were on? Okay. All right, and it looks like the first item um, we will be um, reviewing is policy 1270, parent and family engagement, and presenting are Ms. Spencer, Ms. Stansberry, and Ms. Hahn. Hi, good afternoon. This is Susan Hahn. I am the program specialist in the Office of Family and Community Engagement. And as a result of information obtained from the stakeholder meetings, staff would like to recommend that the policy be revised to include that caregivers be listed as family engagement partner. And in an effort to ensure alignment throughout the policy, we added caregivers throughout the policy. Uh, we also would like the word members to be added after the word community. And then down in, in paragraph 3C2, we'd like to clarify that the Office of Title I will provide assistance and support to Title I school staff to involve parents in the annual review of the school level family engagement plan and in decisions regarding funds allotted for parental involvement activities to improve the academic quality of all schools served with Title I Part A funds. 
that concludes our suggestions uh, for this year. Thank you for that. Um, is there any discussion on the provision, revisions, excuse me, to policy 1270? And also, I should have said before, um, any questions uh, board members may have, if you could please put that in the chat so I can make sure that um, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for um, sharing those updates with us uh, to policy 1270, which is um, very important to the board and the school system. Um, I'm wondering what was the process for the um, input that you received from community stakeholders? Was it specific advisory groups? Um, Ms. Causey, so um, what we do, we um, invited parents from Title I schools with a handwritten invitation, well, you know, a personal invitation, but then we also promote the meetings in our e-newsletter, in our family engagement newsletter, um, and, and anywhere that we can reach families to let them know that this is going on. So our Title I uh, school personnel promoted it at their schools also, and then we, we held our meetings um, and we get the feedback from the parents that are in, uh, attend the meetings. Okay, thank you for that. And also, I just wondered more generally, um, and this is um, for Ms. Clark or Ms. Howie, um, in previous policy review committee meetings when there were um, new committee members from the board, um, there had been a handout that uh, discuss the process, the flow chart, uh, where policy development and review, um, how that took place within the school system with the organization. And I just wondered if um, that is available, if that could be um, attached to board docs for the um, either this policy review committee afterwards or um, the next policy review committee meeting. Surely. I believe it's been distributed, but we're happy to place it in board docs. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I don't recall receiving such a document when I came to policy and review committee. Um, when was that um, put in place? The document was created several years ago. I hesitate to remember how many years ago. Uh, but as I okay. recall, it was distributed at the beginning of the year, but if not, we will certainly make sure all members of the committee have a copy. Great. Thank you so much for that. Welcome. Any additional questions or further discussion? Okay. Um, I'll call on each committee member's name. Um, Right, Ms. Causey, Mr. Mahomza, Mr. Offerman. Okay, so um, hearing if there are no corrections, policy 1270 is moved forward for first reading as presented. So Thank all in you. favor of moving policy 1270 forward. Um, if we could go around and do a roll call vote, please when your name is called and all opposed, please say no. Ms. Causey? Um, I'm voting yes to move it forward to first reader, but I did have a question for after the vote. Thank you. Mr. Offerman? Yeah, uh, yes. Mr. Mahunsa? Yeah. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the um, motion uh, policy 1270 will be moved forward for the first reading. And next, um, we will be excuse hearing me. from. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, ma'am. May staff presented for policy 1270 be excused. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, may I ask a question of staff before they're excused? Uh, we went around and I asked 
for additional questions. I would just ask that when I call your names and ask for questions or um, things like that, to, so that we can move forward in our process that um, we ask our questions, not after the vote, um, because we do want to let staff go. So yes, please ask your questions so that we can move forward. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, so just for the, um, because Policy Review Committee is videotaped and other board members um, sometimes go back and watch it before, ahead of the board meetings. I just wondered if staff could quickly explain the um, connection between the parent and family engagement policy and the Every Student Succeeds Act and relate it to the uh, federal law in compliance with Title I. Is that something staff are able to provide briefly and quickly? Um, because we do have some other policies to get to, or that's perhaps maybe something that could be emailed to Ms. Causey or emailed to board members to share. Um, but can that can a brief explanation be given? I don't know if Michelle Stansberry is still on, but um, it is a requirement of the ESSA law that um, districts have a policy related to family and community engagement. And so we we meet the requirement of that law with our policy. Yes, that's hi, hello everyone. This is Ms. Stansberry. That is definitely a great high level um, response. Thank you, Sue. We can give you some more detailed in information and show the correlation between the two via email. So we'll follow up with that. Thank you. The next policy. <laughs> The next, uh, oh yes, and, Paul and staff who presented for policy um, 1270 um, may be excused. Thank you um, for reminding me of that, Ms. Howie. And next we will review policy 4004 evaluations and presenting that will be Ms. Lowry and Mr. Duke. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will yield to Mr. Duke to share with you um, our suggested changes for policy 4004. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Scott and uh, policy committee members. Um, this school year, um, Board of Education Policy 4004 is scheduled for review. Policy 4004 outlines the board's expectation that all Baltimore County public school employees are to be evaluated. Staff is recommending that the policy be revised to clarify in paragraph one that employee evaluations are the responsibilities of the administrators, managers, and supervisors, and to conform to the policy review committee's editing conventions. Changes. Those are the only ones. Those Based are the enough. only recommended changes. Okay. Could you repeat that again? I, I, I wanted to make sure I heard you said it was in paragraph one. Um, the uh, changes are that in paragraph one, uh, that clarifying that employee evaluation is the responsibility of the administrator, manager, or supervisor, and also the changes uh, that are being um, suggested are to conform to the policy review committee's editing conventions. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Um, is there any discussion on policy 4004? And I'll just go and call each committee member's name. Ms. Carlson, do you have any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I did have a question related to the um, policy in general. So the Board of Education has um, a few employees that report directly to it. Um, and the superintendent has um, the vast majority of employees that uh, are under his administration and supervision. So I um, am wondering, especially with um, information that was um, realized about the timing of evaluations, there is nothing in this policy that speaks to the board's um, responsibility related to this staff that report directly to the board. And um, so I wondered if there was uh, something in the rule that relates to that, um, or if there isn't, if there's something that staff would recommend to clarify that uh, responsibility um, for the board and also um, 
you know, clarify that process. Ms. Clausey, I, I do believe in policy 8400, um, there are specific um, outlines um, concerning um, the evaluation um, responsibilities of the board, for example, with audit. Um, are there um, are, are there other areas um, outside of um, the audit staff that you were questioning? So um, on the org chart, there's a uh, senior executive assistant, um, mm -hmm. but also in the work that uh, is being done system wide that Dr. Williams has um, initiated under his leadership is the uh, system improvements and um, there is supposed to be development of um, a board operations handbook, um, the administrative handbook. Um, so I'm curious if <clears throat> there were segments prepared under evaluations for the board, because that is not something that had previously been in um, any standard operating procedures for the board. Um, mm -hmm. And just as we, you know, implement continuous improvement, um, I was wondering how that had been thought of. This sounds, I, I am a bit, I, I, I'm not sure that I follow Ms. Causey because I know that we supervise the um, Office of Audit. Is, are you talking about the superintendent's evaluation? Is that what you're getting at? Or I'm, I'm just not sure. Uh, well, no, for the superintendent's um, evaluation, the board has worked on and um, agreed to a specific process timeline um, and segments of that are also covered in his contract that are so who's evaluation available. Are you referencing the Department of Audit? So I guess it would be. Yes. So Ms. Causey, I placed in the chat um, the relevant language from policy 8400, which indicates that the board chair uh, at, or at the direction of the board chair, the board's audit committee chair shall be responsible for an annual evaluation of the chief auditor's performance. So in that sense, within the parameters of the policy, it is the audit committee chair and the board chair who share that evaluative responsibility and therefore supervise the chief auditor. Uh, there is not, to my knowledge, an explicit uh, anything that is that explicitly applies to the board's administrative assistant. Uh, so that I would have to defer to the Division of Human Resources about uh, where that would be in standing operating procedures or in the admin's uh, particular contract. Uh, but certainly with respect to the Office of Internal Audit, that is referenced in another policy. And as I understand it, um, I did hear Ms. Clausey say that our executive assistant, I understand that as an employee, that position reports to the superintendent. I just wanted to confirm that. Would that be Ms. Lowry or Ms. Howie? But I believe that. So I thought that she reported both to the superintendent and to the board. That's my understanding, but I can certainly confirm that for the committee. All right, and let's see. Madam okay. Chair, yes. I had a follow-up question based on that response, if I may. Yes, but again, we want to make sure that we give everybody a chance. We don't want to monopolize with just one board member. You want to make sure Mr. Mahomes and Mr. Offman also have opportunities to ask their questions and speak. So yes, please go ahead. So Ms. Lowry, there's also an associated rule 4004, which um, spells out the purpose, overview, guidelines, responsibilities, um, and so on. And um, is that going to be updated as well? Is the rule going to be updated? Is that your question? I, I, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, uh, typically what we do is after um, the policy has been revised, we go back and take a look at the impact that that would have on the rule to make any adjustments then 
um, that would be necessary um, to the rule because sometimes when we bring a policy forward, there are additional changes that come about um, through this process. Um, so once the um, the policy is finalized, we do go back um, to see if there is any additional um, update that needs to be provided to the rule. Thank you for that. I, I have an additional comment, but I'll let uh, the fellow board members uh, proceed as Ms. as Madam Chair. Go ahead, Ms. Um, go ahead with your additional question. So um, it just seems that in terms of being um, making improvements and having clarity for um, staff and for the board, um, that there would be some um, inclusion of this language um, for the board, either in a standard operating procedures manual. So is HR uh, supporting the board in that work or is that something that is um, still open-ended and we'll just address that with the superintendent? Can you, can you be a little bit more specific as far as what you're, you're referencing as far as um, support that you need for the board? Certainly. So the Board of Education, um, as the governing organization, doesn't have independent personnel doing um, HR, uh, organizational development, IT. All of those are resources that uh, are in the school system. Mm -hmm. So if the um, and I understand that work on the standard operating procedures and the system improvement was has been delayed <clears throat> because of the pandemic and because of the ransomware attack. Uh, but that was work that was my understanding that was underway. So if you, if you as um, the HR are not aware of it being done, then um, I would ask, I would just send an email to the superintendent to ask, you know, where where it is on that, because we know that that time frame is coming up. That seems like something we could follow up with the superintendent on. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good idea, Ms. Clausey, to send an email and then um, we can follow up and see um, where we can go. So. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Mahalka, do you have any questions? No, okay. Mr. Alfman, do you have any None. questions? So, um, if there are no corrections, then policy 4004 is to be forward for first reading is presented. Um, and if we could go and do a roll call vote, Ms. Clark, please. Um, yes, Ms. Scott, I see Ms. Causey has another question. We're in the um, stage of voting now, so we need to go ahead with the vote. Okay, Ms. Causey. I'm going to vote no. Mr. Opperman? Yes. Mr. Mahumsa? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Okay, so policy 404 will be moved forward for first reading. Um, the next item is policy 5130, withdrawal from school from school prior to graduation and for that we will be hearing from Ms. excuse me Dr. Zarchin, Dr. Nieves and Ms. Ferguson. So oh, excuse me um, Madam Chair if Ms. Lowry and uh, Mr. Duke can please be excused as their policy has been completed their policy presentation has been completed if there's no objection from the committee. Don't have any objections thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Dr. Darchin and Dr. Nieves, I uh, did interrupt the flow of your presentation. That's all right. Thank you very much. I didn't want to uh, interrupt. Uh, didn't want to interrupt you. So good afternoon. I want to provide a brief overview of policy 5130. Uh, this policy speaks to the expectation that all students graduate from high school 
and establishes requirements for guidelines to be implemented when a student wishes to terminate their formal education and withdraw from school prior to graduation. At this time, I will turn to Dr. Nieves and Ms. Ferguson to provide additional information. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Scott and members of the Policy Review Committee. Uh, the changes that we are bringing forward today for your consideration um, in Policy 5130 um, in Section 1 is just some clarifying language about uh, indicating when a student expresses an interest uh, to terminate their formal education. In Section 2, we added definitions to align with definitions that are in COMAR. In Section 3, we added clarifying language indicating that the superintendent shall implement and establish guidelines to be followed when a student wishes to terminate their formal education and withdraw from school prior to graduation. And those are the only uh, changes. Oh, I'm sorry. And then uh, finally, uh, we added uh, po related policies, Board of Education Policy 2380, Records Information Management, and Board of Education Policy 5230, Student Records. Thank you for that. And I saw it says, um, whenever a student expresses an interest, wishes to, and that was the first change? That's correct. Okay. Okay, so yes, we'll go um, see if there is any discussion on policy 5130, withdrawal from school prior to graduation and I'll go in order. Um, Ms. Quasi, any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I, um, in the, in reading the policy and the, um, the goal of uh, the Board of Education is the expectation that all students will graduate from high school, college or career ready. Uh, and then it has definitions which are good and I think that was a, um, a, a helpful improvement. But then the standard just uh, states that the, superman, the superintendent shall implement and establish guidelines to be followed. And it says the guidelines shall include conducting an educational exit interview as required by state regulation. And then when I looked to the rule um, for some more depth um it, it it spoke basically to the same thing um and i would think that we would want in our policy um or at least in the uh, superintendent's rule specific steps to encourage that student uh to receive whatever supports and resources they needed to stay and continue their education i don't think this policy um is helpful. I think the policy and the rule should very explicitly state what activities and actions and personnel are going to be involved in working with the student and also uh, their family, their caregivers, uh, their guardian, um, in order to encourage them to graduate. So I, I, I find this to be, um, you know, I, I find this to be lacking. So I'm just curious what what the uh, what the goal was. So uh, Ms. Causey, perhaps it would be helpful for staff to explain the sorts of interventions that are provided to students who uh, contemplate uh, leaving school prior to their uh, to the receipt of their high school diploma. Thank you, Ms. Howie. I think that will be helpful and because I know that there is a lot of um, tremendous work that does get done with students that are at risk. Um, for um, dropping out and I but I just think it needs to be stated clearly in the policy um, that there is an expectation that there are a series of um, actions and personnel. So I think that would be helpful to hear um, all the good things that that are getting done. 
I, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, this is Ms. Scott. If I could just understand, it looks like in B, it does say um, whenever a student expresses an interest, wishes to terminate your formal education and withdraw from school prior to graduation, efforts should be made to determine the underlying reason for the withdrawal so that in interventions may be implemented to encourage all, excuse me, to encourage the student to remain enrolled in school or participate in other educational options. So I believe that kind of speaks to what you were saying, Ms. Palsy, but again, if staff could expound upon that, um, because for me that it was self-evident, but um, if it's not quite as clear for others, then if staff could go into more detail about that, that'd be great. Sure, I'll have uh, Ms. Ferguson provide details and um, also speak to the statewide educational interview form that is used as part of the process. Good afternoon, everyone. As Dr. Um, Nieves just mentioned, um, each student is required to, um, before they, once they express that interest, um, they have to meet with staff to go through an educational interview. Um, long before they get to that place, um, as Ms. Scott mentioned, there are several interventions that are put in place based upon what the students, what the underlying reason is. So if there is an attendance issue and there's a reason we find out why the student is not attending on a regular basis and wishes to terminate as a result, um, then we look at, so are there other opportunities that we can prov provide that student? Should that student um, attend evening school? Would that schedule work out better? Um, all of the interventions should be based upon the student's needs. So um, we could have a laundry list, but it would just be that. Um, we would much rather have um, um, base the interventions on the individual student's needs. Um, if a student, um, if there's an academic issue, then certainly that student is bought, brought before the student support team to look at what interventions would be in, uh, need to be in place so that that student can earn the appropriate credits, uh, amount of credits to be eligible to graduate from high school. So as you mentioned, Ms. Causey, there are a number of interventions that are put in place for students who are at the place of um, expressing interest to, um, to leave school before graduating. Um, we just provide those interventions on an individual basis. That's why that, that statement that Ms. Scott um, read earlier is there. Thank you. Okay. And so I wanted to um, make sure anyone else would like to have any questions would be able to speak. Um, so I'll just go around. Um, Mr. Mahomza? No. Okay, Mr. Offerman. Yes, I do. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, uh, what are the current uh, state regulation in terms of ages when students can drop out with with a parent uh, approval or signature, and uh, and uh, and what age when a student can drop out on, on their own without any parental uh, uh, approval? So students must be 18 years old in order to drop out or to leave school um, before graduating. That is the age age with or without parent approval. So at, as the age of 18, we know um, students can pretty much sign themselves out, but um, 18 is the, the um, age now that changed um, just a couple of years ago. Thank you. Uh, the other concern I have, or not concern, but uh, I guess, uh, Thing that I'm interested in looking at is on uh, page two, line 23 to 28, where it talks about, and I might be in the wrong spot, so I apologize. Wait one second. Oh, I know, I know. I'm not sure there's right. I don't know if I have the right situation, but I, but I know that uh, I know that I, when I was at Towson, we had kids drop out or we actually dropped kids out and this was basically because they just wouldn't attend and they wouldn't respond to any uh to any uh to to, to any kind of context and i was wondering what if we have any information about what percentage of kids actually uh do complete the uh the uh the state uh the state form uh explaining uh explaining why they're leaving 
the requirement is for every student that leaves school before um, graduating, there should be an exit form in that student's file. It's part of the Maryland um, student record systems. It's actually SR card number seven. Uh, so um, the, it's actually it's a part of the um, a part of the record system. So it's a required document. OK, but but uh, but and I'm perhaps not perhaps don't want to see it. Uh, does this does this form uh, does this form uh, does this form contain any uh, any uh, notes from any kind of interview or is that uh, or is that uh, or is that not part of the form? Mr. Offerman, I'm looking at the form and um, it allows uh, to indicate the reason for termination. Um, the dates when the interviews were conducted by the various parties, and then there's a, a section for comments. Uh, okay, fine, fine. Uh, that's fine. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Were there any additional questions from board members before I move on? Because once we start voting, we vote. Yeah, we don't. I, uh, I have one more comment to make. I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Offerman, and that is uh, I don't think we need a list of the uh, of the various processes in the actual uh, policy. Uh, I certainly think that uh, it'd probably be good to have some place where we uh, perhaps list a group of uh, possible uh, interventions, but, but I don't think the policy is is, is actually the, uh, the, uh, the uh, place for that. Thank you. Ms. Calls, it looks like you have a follow up question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I, I, um, I think that it would be helpful for the policy to have additional language that points to um, not a specific list, uh, but just in terms of the, the goal and the, the efforts that are made by staff um, along the way, because we know that they don't wait till the end. They they work all along the way. Um, and I certainly think it would be helpful to have some additional guidelines in the rule that do speak to all of the interventions. Um, and given the question that was asked about the age, given that the law has changed since this policy was last updated, um, it would be helpful to, I believe, to put the age, um, the current legal age in the policy um, and in the rule. I get um, counsel's, uh, Ms. Howie, on that. Is that something that would be appropriate for, to put into the policy? It's not inappropriate. It's, it's not inappropriate. Board. No, ma'am. Um, Ms. Caldwell, uh, or uh, rather, do we need to make a motion to have that put in, or could we just make that a recommendation? So, members of the committee, if there are specifics that you'd like to see, obviously you mentioned, or Ms. Causey mentioned, she wanted to see um, the age of the student based on the change in the in the statute. Uh, but if there are other changes, if you want to provide direction to staff. Uh, we'll work on direction. We'll work based on your direction and return the policy either to you or to the full board, depending on the committee's pleasure. Okay. Um, so I know Ms. Colsey said she'd like to see some specific, see the age specifically put in. Um, were there any other changes that committee members wanted to see included in the policy? No. Okay. So then. Um, my recommendation, unless there's any opposition to that, would be that um, the change is made and then it comes back to um, the committee and then send it to the full board. Does that work well for everyone? That's fine with me. Offer me. Okay, Mr. Mahamza. Fine with me. Okay, Ms. Causey. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. All right. We'll work on the policy then, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Moving on. We now we'll go to policy 5470 wellness and presenting are Dr. Scriven, Dr. Sarchin, Dr. Nieves, Mr. Patillo, and Ms. Levenstein. 
And again, uh, I beg your pardon, members of the committee, if Ms. Ferguson uh, could please be excused, uh, she's not slated to present on 5470. Certainly. Thank you, Ms. Ferguson. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, policy 5470 reflects a commitment to providing a school environment that promotes students' health, well being, and ability to learn. This policy must be reviewed on a triannual basis. Last year, Rule 5470 was reviewed. This policy is known as our locus, local wellness policy, and there are 10 critical components to this policy health education physical education and physical activity, health services, nutrition, environment and services, social and emotional school climate, physical environment, employee wellness, community involvement and family engagement. At this time, I will turn it over to the rest of the group. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zarchin. Good afternoon again, Chairwoman. Scott and members of the policy review committee. The changes that we are offering for your consideration, first of all, are in on page two, section C, uh, beginning with line uh, six and just ensuring consistency, uh, consistency and use of language so that uh, we have establishing, providing, communicating, identifying, involving, from numbers one to five. And then in section D, uh, we are offering language uh, that would indicate the lead, uh, the leadership for the wellness policy, as well as the responsibilities for the wellness policy uh, leadership team. And, um questions, so I want to make sure that we go in order. As always, um, first, Ms. Colsey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Nieve, for um, sharing that information with us. I was just wondering if you could um, speak to the stakeholders that were involved in the revision um, and practices of the policy through the participation in the Maryland Wellness Policies and Practices Survey. Was that a um, parent survey that went out to um, all current parents or what were the um, logistics and uh, parameters of that? Thank you for that question, Ms. Causey. And I'm gonna ask also that uh, Ms. Levenstein uh, help me with uh, um, answering this question. Um, Last year, uh, we worked with the University of Maryland uh, to conduct uh, a survey uh, based on the Maryland School Wellness Scorecard. Um, and um, on that instrument, uh, school leaders are asked to assess and prioritize um, their school wellness practices. And so uh, the instrument looks at the school wellness team. Is it established? How often does it meet uh, the staff modeling of healthy eating and physical activity behaviors, student and family meal involvement, family and community access, access to hand washing facilities, um, and then looking at the physical uh, activity environment, looking at nutrition guidelines, looking at nutrition environment, and um, and so school leaders are to work with uh, a team of stakeholders at their school to complete the survey and then put together an action plan. And I'll let uh, Ms. Levenstein elaborate. Thank you, Dr. Yabez. Yes, the, um, the instrument went out to school administrators uh, board members, not to families. It went to board, or excuse me, it went to the school administrators to respond as it related to their individual schools and looking at the many components of the uh, school wellness policy. It primarily focused on um, health education, physical education, and nutrition services.
the oh, I'm sorry, sorry um, Miss Scott, uh, the the results of that of the uh, review was presented to our school health council with the results of that survey. And it's been an ongoing project with the University of Maryland. So thank you, Ms. Levenstein. Um, so when it says that there's parents and so forth involved, those are the parents that are in the um, review committee. You called it the, the health advisory? Yeah, the school health council. Yes, Mrs. Causey, there are um, parents that both double as um, parents in, from the community and they may have, they may work in uh, either county government or within BCPS. It's a combined, the school health council is a joint effort with uh, Dr. Branch with the health department and with um, Dr. Williams with the school system. Okay, so about how many parents would you say are on that health council? Um, off the top of my head, I believe there were at least two. One, in fact, was a physician. She and she worked for Franklin Square Hospital. Uh, at the at the moment, I don't know if she's still within the area or if she has left both employee or um, the the board of edu or I mean the school system. Okay, um, it just seemed from the policy analysis that there were. Um, a large number of stakeholders um, that were involved. So that that would be the leadership of the schools and then the um, the uh, members of the health council. Is that am I understanding that correctly? Yes, the health council would be com the school health council uh, would be comprised of a combination of uh, school system employees for their respective areas of expertise or those that fall under the um, 10 components of student health, as well as a partnership with county uh, health department um, representatives. We would come together, I believe it's four times a year, and we discuss a myriad of health issues and wellness issues for the student. Um, and this, this review, this survey was just one small part of um, what goes out to school administrators and um, the report out by the University of Maryland. Otherwise, there's uh, documented minutes um, that I know are prepared by Dr. Lake and uh, Ms. Somerville together um, that would uh, highlight all the different topics that are looked at uh, from all the members that are present um, uh, during that time. Okay, thank you for that. Another question I had is in uh, the summer, <clears throat> excuse me, the Board of Education voted to expand the community eligibility program to provide uh, additional um, nutrition opportunities for students. And just recently, um, Madam Chair and Dr. Williams uh, were in a press conference with the county executive who um, presented his budget, which included support for that expansion. So is that reflected in the, um, I know that happened just recently, but um, are those sorts of board um, decisions and now the recent funding incorporated into the policy? Um, <clears throat> well, Ms. Causey, that would be a totally separate subject matter. Um, the community eligibility uh, program provision uh, would be part of the school year relative to um, the identified schools that were approved by MSDE to provide meals at no cost. Since we have been under a waiver for and allowing school meals to be served um, all year at free of charge, we have not yet implemented the program, but there was a period of time in the past um, year of 2020 where we outlined to the um, budget committee, audit and budget committee, that there could potentially be a shortfall of revenue from the uh, implementation of that program. That has not changed. However, we have not implemented the program. So there is um, agreement between Board of Education and county government to ensure that the food service department, our department, uh, which is an enterprise fund, would not lose um, revenue relative to the implementation of that program. And I would say, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, 
we spoke about this in the equity committee and um, Dr. Hager and um, uh, the staff from food services, as well as um, uh, other experts from the state came and went into detail um, on the um, CEP program and, and how that works. But I do feel like we're getting away from this policy. So uh, Ms. Calsey, did you have any additional questions related to this policy and to the suggested changes or did you have any suggested changes? Mm -hmm. or did you uh, not at this time, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and then also, uh, Mr. Mahomes, any questions or additions? Uh, we pass for now. Okay, Certainly Mr. Offerman. Uh, all my uh, all my concerns were uh, were already addressed during the uh, previous discussion. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, I just had a question because I heard it discussed, but and again we discussed this in the equity committee, um, and Ms. Calsey actually brought up um, some of it as well. Um, the wellness group, the health council, at every school, and um, we did talk about that in the equity committee and um, how that would together or if it could and I just kind of wanted to see is that here in this policy um the wellness council or the health councils and are those a I think you call the wellness group or health council but I, I didn't see that in the policy and if I missed it um please direct me to where that is so the in the policy in the work there is a a key component in getting feedback from the community in those school based wellness teams. Uh, so that will be work as as we move forward, gathering input from community members and staff uh, okay. with the wellness policy. OK, great. Thank you. Yeah, and it was touched on. I just. Uh, questions about it, so. OK. All right, did, uh, Mr. Mahomes, did you have a question? Yes, um, I would like to know um, in, in terms of uh, certain um, things addressed in the policy, for example, um, uh, providing physical education. Um, I, would, I would like to know um, how is, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. How are, are, some, are some of these things um, followed throughout all grade levels of high school? And the reason why I bring up um, uh, physical education specifically is because um, uh, for high school, it's, uh, uh, high schools are only required one credit of like physical education gym. Um, so uh, most students would take that their first year and um, the next three years, unless they play sports, don't take some type of physical education class. And I would like to know, um, is, does the policy just state that we need a physical education class, not um, in all years of high school? I don't know if that I, makes sense, sir. Thank you for that question, Mr. Mahamza. I I think the purpose of this policy is that it um, it outlines those areas that, based on looking at a whole school, whole community, whole child model, involves looking at those ten areas that Dr. Zarchin mentioned. Physical education being one of those, and it is the the it is the work of the leadership team to assess the programming in all of those areas, to see the needs of, the, of our community, to look at those uh, surveys that the local school wellness councils are putting together and take that information and make recommendations uh, regarding the programming and services that we offer. So while this group does not necessarily outline um, would outline the requirements for physical education. This group may make recommendations based on the data, based on stakeholder feedback, uh, based on um, any other needs that arise as a result of the work of the group. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also um, in terms of the mental uh, wellness uh, piece. Um, I think I've asked this question before uh, when we had uh, Dr. Zurchin present to the pool board about uh, how do we reach uh, those students who don't um, reach out to guidance counselors themselves. 
Um, and I would just like to see um, more uh, initiatives being put in place uh, because uh, as we've seen this year, uh, kids posting on social media, if they want that they're alone or can't contact the guidance counselors, but also uh, on our normal school years, we'd see um, kids being down or leaving class and not having a trusted adult in the building. So I, I, I guess, I know we have the new policy, but I would like to see new procedures. And um, is, is that uh, work being, is, is that work going on with those community groups? Yes, and, thank and do you. We hope to see, do we hope to see new stuff in the future? Because it is an ongoing problem and I've heard this um, from students. Yes, thank you again for that great question. And um, I know that Dr. Zarchin and I um, have discussed uh, your concerns um, and I wanted to inform you and the members of the Board of Education that are on this team's meeting that uh, this year we established a mental health advisory committee and that mental health advisory committee is in the process as met already three times, um, but also has a has a subcommittee that is looking at the needs out there and conducting a needs assessment of our students um, and staff and families trying to gauge uh, where are we doing well? What is the quality of the mental health service delivery model in Baltimore County Public Schools? Where are there unmet needs? And then working with the stakeholders and uh, with other with with our stakeholders to determine uh, what resources are needed and then how we can provide those resources to students. So the work of that sub subcommittee that is uh, conducting the focus groups right now, we hope to see that finalized by the end of the year um, with recommendations coming forth uh, from that group and then uh, beginning to address uh, any supports or resources needed with the beginning of the 20. 21-22 school year. Uh, thank you. That's all my questions. Thanks, and, I, and thank you for your advocacy. Uh, Ms. Causey, it looks like you have another question or follow up. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. So I had um, two questions and one is given. Well, it's three questions. The shortest one is what is the current rule for the minimum amount of recess for our elementary um, and middle schoolers? As Mr. Mahamza pointed out, the requirement for high schoolers is only one uh, physical education class in four years. I'm sorry, is that related to the policy? It is because um, I'm curious after reading the policy, what would be the format, uh, for instance, if the board wanted to request uh, that Dr. Williams and staff evaluate expanding the number of minutes of recess? Because <clears throat> I believe it's only 20 minutes, and I think that most people, when they hear that, did not, were not aware of it, and that, um, especially given the pandemic and uh, children coming back together next year, um, that it may be very helpful to have more social time uh, as well as more physical time in order to support the whole child um yeah. which well, in the interest of time, I, i'm wondering is that something that we would add to this or is that a discussion uh and, and I, I just i would I'd like to give us how input on this is that something that would be in addition to this or is that because that sounds like a larger discussion or like like we're going into another area so um the Policy specifically speaks to health education, physical education, physical activity, supporting lifestyle. And so my question is what, given this policy and what's in the rule, what would be the process if it was the board or if it was um, uh, the student member of the board or the student council um, or you know members of staff from the mental health advisory, how would they start evaluating having mandating more recess time or in the same vein what would okay, be the well, process just, to okay. you want to know how can we get longer recess time for kids is that um something that we would put in because i, I want to stick to the policy it sounds like you're 
talking about something that we would do like in open set, like um, at a board meeting, making a motion to lengthen recess time. Is that something that would be mandated and put in this policy? Is so thank you, Madam Chair, for your question. Um, there, it also relates to, um, I was also going to reflect on school start time. That's been a big uh, concern of uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics. There's a whole organization, Start School Later, uh, that speaks, uh, they send information to the board. They do advocacy countywide. So my uh, question no, about no, policy. I, want to be, I don't want us to get kind of like down a rabbit hole and endless debate. I want to make sure that we are focusing on the policy if we have additions or we want to change or, or take out. But I, I would like us to remain focused on this so that we can process this. And then if that is something um, you know, perhaps we could discuss it at our next meeting or, or, or if it has to go to another policy. Um, but it's kind of sounding like this is kind of like a catch all. And I, I, I don't. Miss Scott, if. Miss Scott, if I can uh, speak to that uh, quickly, um, I would believe uh, based on my experience, because I've chaired the, the wellness committee in uh, previous uh, positions that I've had in other school systems and recommendation the way the process would work is that first of all we have representatives from all those different offices sitting at the their part of the wellness uh, uh, leadership team so phys ed is at the table so is health services etc and so the way that I see the process working is that recommendations would be would come forth to the wellness committee who would then uh, do the research and in the past um, the wellness committees that I've served on have done uh, research into start times have done looked at recess and then made recommendations which would then come back uh, to the board of education through um, whether that be curriculum related policies or through our nutrition policies, et cetera, um, for the board's uh, consideration and approval. Okay, that sounds like a, a process. So have both the recommendations that Ms. Palsy brought up, have those already been um, uh, reviewed and ready to come back or is that a request then I guess that we would make to go to those, um, like you said, schools or wellness councils and then they would send us back those are things recommendations that could come and then the, the wellness committee could uh, sit and uh, depending on and, and prioritize uh, what those recommendations are and begin to do work around that and and bring forth recommendations okay I mean that sounds like a person that's something that, that we can going forward. Um, were there any additional questions exposing on this particular policy changes or, or anything that you would like to see? Yes, so so thank you Dr. Nieve for that information. Those examples um, were you know examples that I was trying to understand whether this policy would be specific enough um, and I will be abstaining from this vote because I think that there is um, additional specificity that could go into this, especially just learning about the Mental Health Advisory Committee. There's a lot of good work and processes that I think clarification would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no corrections, um, policy 57, excuse me, 5470 is moved forward for first reading as presented. And if we could take a roll call vote, please. Yes, Ms. Causey. I'm abstaining, thank you. Mr. Offerman? I'm voting yes. Mr. Mahomza? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Three in favor, thank you. Thank you, motion carries. So policy five, four, seven, zero. We'll be moving forward for first reading as edited. Okay, and so now the floor is open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notes provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. So, so excuse me, uh, members of the committee, if uh, the remaining staff members who were uh, presenting on policy 5470 could please be excused. Yes, certainly. Thank you, Thank staff, you. very much. Thank you. So are there any issues of concern 
and I can go around and call each member's name. Ms. Causey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at an earlier, a previous board meeting, I had um, requested that policy 4005 be reviewed uh, by policy review committee uh, staff. And I also uh, requested that of the superintendent. Uh, it's the tutoring educational services, um, and it relates to teachers um, and any potential conflicts of interest and some um, uh, boundaries in terms of uh, when teachers um, and whom, whom, whom teachers can tutor. Um, so I was wondering if any of that evaluation had uh, been done or is planned to be um, done in the future. Yes, ma'am. Summary will be provided to the board uh, because it's not only in the 4000 series that the prohibition exists, it also exists in your ethics code policy. Uh, so that information will be provided so it can be determined how the board wishes to proceed. OK, thank you. I had just heard from a number of teachers that were very interested in signing up for the tutoring programs that uh, the school system is implementing in terms of recovery from the COVID pandemic. Um, so just wanted to make sure that um, opportunities existed, but also that guidelines were followed. So thank you for that. Um, I would. I know this is coming um, in a future meeting, but I, I would like to know an update when um, the eight symbols policy would be presented for um, approval. Uh, I think from this committee and also um, for the full board. Um, that's really all. So, Mr. Mahomza, that policy had been uh, placed on the March agenda. As you know, we had challenges with scheduling the March meeting. So that policy 0100 is coming forward to you at the rescheduled March meeting, was, which is next week. OK, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Mahomza. OK, and next we have Mr. Offerman. Not at this time, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, and Ms. Paulson, you said you had one more question. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I don't know if the agenda has been released for Friday's meeting, um, but the board recently had requested policy review committee to do some additional work related to policies that had come forward on first reader. And I just was um, wondering when those are going to be worked into um, future agendas. So the policies, ma'am, that we have that uh, we've placed actually on the June 14th agenda that were discussed at previous board meetings are 8311, uh, 8221, 8314, and 8601. Um, those uh, will be coming forward to you in June. Thank you. And I didn't have any um, additional notes or questions at this time. So the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for April 28, 2001 at 1 p.m. This meeting has been scheduled because of the inability to hold a meeting in March. The March agenda has been moved to the April 28th meeting. So because there's no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you, PRC members. Thank you. Good evening.